James Magnus. I was just checking back on an old diary of mine. All right. Of uh, in, in September 1973, I started on a trip through Africa, or okay. to go through Africa, coming from London and right through to Nairobi. All right. And we were a group of us were on a Bedford truck. Okay. And a Land Rover. And it took us about oh, a week and a half to get down to southern Spain and across from Gibraltar to Ceuta. And then we started to get, get into the Arabic. On the second day after crossing, the first of all, we saw the fabulous sunset, went into his town, Tetuan, and uh, we got into the, into the town and the streets were vibrant with life as we drove through. There were scores of Arabs up and down the streets, salad skins, shouting, selling fruit, vegetables, or begging. After parking, we wandered through the town, took out a bit of money, and then sort of thought, we'd get, I must get a Arabic jalaba. Yeah, know, yeah. It was typical of the area. And uh, so got into the market, and the first shops wanted the equivalent of seven pounds on the edge of the market. But when we got deep, and I got deeper into it, the price dropped slightly, and he started to haggle. At the last one, um, I got fed up with this haggling. And I stuck at the equivalent of three pounds. Chap said, no, no, I, I, I want five pounds. At last, my exasperate said, oh, Kelly Wally. And I walked off. And he said, ah, 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 jeep, jeep. And yeah. he came and uh, he gave it to me for the equivalent of three pounds. All this time later, uh, some, you know, 45 years later, whatever it is, no slightly more, it was being kept. And with your trip to Morocco, yeah. I thought it'd be nice, you know, if you could have this jalala. Oh, thanks. Well, you must, you must to... get some pictures on yeah. me. Because uh, I had some really nice pictures of me with yeah. the jalala on the dunes. I remember seeing him yeah. as a kid with the photo albums. Yeah. Hey, you look really good in that. Thanks, <laughs> Clean. <laughs> Salam alaikum, <laughs> Salam uh, Anyway, we, we drove up into the Atlas Mountains and the views were fantastic. The terrific vistas as we drove up to 5,000 feet. All along the road were sharp bends and Arabs jumped out from anything from 10 to 50 of them shouting out, Hashish, Hashish, and holding packets and giving the sign of the hand. One could see way across the mountains as the evening approached and we were surrounded by mists and clouds like some water painting. The round and round we twisted and we climbed for hours. The edge of the road was marked with occasional posts of boulders on occasionally one saw cars far below the mountains smashed up and must have probably burnt as well every hour or so a coach or truck would flash past at breakneck speed overtaking us and then nearly having us off the road apart from this it was quiet and eventually when we got high enough we pulled off onto the side of the road and although it was chilly we made a fire and we made our camp. We crossed it. We crossed through the Sahara, which of course, you know, it's the peace is fantastic and the quietness. And uh, we were we wanted to get to Janet, this old Crusader fort, right in the centre of the Sahara. And uh, we had to get well, permission from the police and so on to do it, which was yeah. a lot of haggling. And unfortunately, you know, before we reached Janet in the last part, you know, we were chasing across this this flat flat plain when suddenly. The whole front of the truck went down. There was a huge bang. And the, everyone in the truck was thrown forward into the cab. After that, the Keith, who was driving, tried to start it up again. There was this horrible whining sound. Yeah. And uh, so they climbed underneath. And the two drive shafts were spent, were bent. And our front wheels were like this. And we, we still hadn't reached Janet. We, we were then, you know, just had two-wheel drive. So... When we crossed some dunes, you know, we had to use sand tracks and we, were, we took them off the side of the truck. You know, a whole gang of us had to carry them, keep on keep pushing, it, pushing, it, pushing, it, pushing, it, pushing it. Anyway, we, we made it. The, this, the sad part was, that, well, the unfortunate result was we wanted to cross from there, from Janet, the empty quarter where we would have yeah. to have a Bedouin guide. But because we didn't have the four-wheel drive, we had to then you know, rethink our plans, the leaders of the group contacted the UK and we're trying to get some parts flown out to Tamarasset on the main route so we would have to cross to there. We spent a bit of time repairing the truck or doing what we could in Janet and uh, my friend Charlie and I decided to go into the local hotel for about a couple of at least we could get a night's sleep and, <laughs> yeah. and so on. And while we were there 
we met four, four young Germans who were in two Unimogs, which is German ambulances from the, from the Second World War. And they were concerned about doing the going right through the, the, the desert, cutting yes. across from Shandit to Dan Rasset, sorry. That's all right. And uh, you're, in the desert, you always have to have drinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was great because they were concerned about going on their own. They came with us and it saved us because every time we came to a big view, we had to use the sand tracks. But at the time, we had both of these unibogs pulling us as well. So it, was, it was a bit like a famous, a famous um, film from uh, about <clears throat> the Second World War. Ice cold in Alex. Yes. And they were crossing in this ambulance. Yeah. And I was just dreaming of having this ice cold beer at the end. And we were exactly the same. But, but these places were... Arabic towns and you know they didn't have beer but when we got to Tamarasset Alhamdulillah yeah we, we could get we could get some ice cold beer to revive ourselves but we didn't get the parts and we had to continue south from there what happened was that they a whole lot of broken down old uh, Bedford diesel trucks yeah which you know when they broke down they just had no use for them so we stole some drive rods from that and uh, and it was really nice when we were there because by then, it was into Eid al Fitr. Yes, and all these sheikhs came down with their tribes into the into Karna, which is the main city, and they're riding these magnificent white chargers, and they were yeah. in these beautiful blue robes. It was really, really good. We we carried on, and then it was many adventures. Yeah, through the Congo and all the rest of it, but you're certainly going to have, have an interesting time. So, what was the highlight of your trip in Morocco? Would you say? Oh, it's the, the stillness going across the mountains, the height and the clearness of the air. And then coming down from there you know, into the Sahara Desert, you start to see the big dunes. And as we, we drove along, you know, we, passed, and we passed several camel trains. And you'll see in my photos of the trip, some of the pictures of these camel trains. And it really, the, the atmosphere is fantastic. The best memories were at night in the middle of the desert there's no no other light it's completely dark no light pollution so you, no light pollution at all so you look up into the sky yeah and it's a billion stars yeah and every star is large and you see these shooting stars and yeah. so on and it's just magical we had generally about two two people on shift a guard shift at a time and then about three o'clock you know we would we would change and uh, we formed some really good you know good friendships that and you would be sitting in the night by the fire and sharing stories and jokes and having some the coffee and so and uh you know it was looking forward to what was what was coming but what's what's your experiences because i think you've done a trip one trip before when i went in um june just before Norway, I went over just about two and a half weeks and then I found that gold bottle. I think that was quite a nice highlight for it. But again, like going up to Ayat Bukmez and kind of when we climbed up onto the ridge, it was kind of the sort of same experience. There was like no full moon or no moon at all. And then there was loads of cloud cover and then all of a sudden it just opened up and you could see the Milky Way. And it was just like an incredible. Yeah, this is a similar experience. Yeah, similar just experience. like pitch black, you know, just a sheer drop on the left and a sheer drop of the, on the right. You know, you just mm. it was just an incredible sort of wild experience. Yeah, well, on those roads, you you felt like you might have to have a change of underpants. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few times, quite a few times, that's for sure. You know, you don't have any seat belts, and if you try and put your seat belt on, they get in offended, and it's like, do you not trust my driving? <laughs> yeah. And Allah is Allah is watching yeah. you. <laughs> so no, it was like incredible experience, and you know, it'd be nice to sort of go to the Sahara and experience the desert again. Oh, it's quite it's quite unique. Yeah, definitely. Compared to like any other country, like Morocco, the culture is just so like welcoming, and you know at times it can be in your face yeah. within the city, but once you get into the countryside, you know they just like want to yeah. bring you in, you know into their home and cook for you and just like make friends. Yeah. I mean, this was this was in fact our experience traveling right through Africa. Yeah, know? I mean, you know, even when you got in, you got in this you know, more Central Africa, you know, people that. Um, in the big towns 
you know you had to be careful of you know, robberies and all yeah. the rest of it but in the you know when you got into the forest and the, away from the towns the people just so welcoming you know you were friends yeah habibi habibi <laughs> sharing moments that's yeah. magical i like yeah. that that's good that's good well it's you know you're following the following in the footsteps <laughs> yeah definitely and it's, it's nice to do so keep your records because yeah you know you, you know. well maybe i can have a little a little yeah. read as I read my dad's diary, I start to wonder what tales my journey will be able to tell. Who would I meet when I go? Cisco, a fellow light painter, invited me back to Morocco. It would be nice to be back, visit Uzud and relax. Tried to catch up with Muhammad and my other friends who I met along the way. I called Muhammad to tell him I was coming for an adventure. Once I met him, we sat down and we ate and shared a tea. I mentioned a plan that I'll go to Marrakesh to stay with Cisco before going to Mazuga. We joined him to a dance under the full moon in the Sahara Desert to share the light, to be free. All of us having our own mission to carry out in the sands of time. To see the dunes as tall as three-storey buildings towering over me once again like I remember. To capture the same shot and recreate what my dad took out in the desert with his Diablo. To meet fellow light painter, photographers, artists, performers, wild people. I also wanted to bring the Moroccan gold back to carve the night sky with it. I had a long beard that was grown from when I went out in June and I asked Muhammad to meet me in the Sahara and to bring his scissors. He used to be a barber so I thought it would be fitting to have a trim before coming back with him. His friends joined us for dinner where we talked and played music. We went to relax with his friends at the barber shop next to Muhammad's house to share music with them. We decided to share the moment taking light painting portraits with them.
محمد عبد العزيز كاينه الحريره نجيب لكم الحريره ها الحريره الله يحفظك يا ربي يا ربي يا ربي محمد كي تري تحرير معليش But fire, yes. not like that. Not no, yes. no, just little, little. And look how we know if it's real. It's not really yet. No. Moment, can you see how we know if it's real? A little man. Ah, it's a flower garden before yes. no existing market. No. Yeah. Same one he go for now many time and he come no exist. Ah. ah. If it stay come up, yes. a little sugar, and uh, he go down. Yes. Yes, and like that you have many time to cook. For yours, one might be one. And yes. Ah, not that it. Enough. No, no, you. No. Where it's your tea. Moroccan tea. Yes. Yeah. Latin glandula. No, Moroccan <laughs> tea, my friend. Moroccan tea. <laughs> How how we know if it's really all flowers coming up? Ah. Yes. Voila. Make of fire sugar. Okay. Fire. I left the Cisco's house to join a map view of light with only the cosmic stars. This was a journey I would not forget.
Yeah, yeah. This is MBM live from the Bukuzo! The outer space! One more clap!
Yes, my bros. We do again. Again. <laughs> to see Whoa. Wow. yes man think it gets bad very cool mm. bravo 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 wow masterpiece wow yes smashed it You'd
कुछ लिखा दे चनी सुईया हटा रही हटा रही लाइक इसे
is getting annoying, man. <laughs> it's too long. Non, t'as pas essayé l'instrument, c'est que j'ai des textes de musique à peut-être caler sur, pour chanter en plus. Oui, et oui, même, tu peux le remettre par exemple, tu le veux, mais comment il se joue, il est bien beau. Ah, moi je m'adapte sur ce qu'il fait. Oui, ce que ça veut dire, ce que je te fais, c'est. Oui, bien sûr. Il joue, mais ça, ça dérange oui, pas oui, si j'essaye quelque je chose. Non. Ok. Allez, si. Cool. Bravo, il a de la campagne, c'est ce que je dis. Eh oui, eh oui. Eh oui, regarde. Oui, ça va être. Je vais essayer de tout prendre. Bien. C'est bon, mais j'ai qu'à faire un peu de monde. Ça va être ça. Sorry. Il y a ce que je dis. Je t'en parle. Ah, oui, je t'en dis. As I tried to come back from the wilderness I experienced, I tried to think of how to tell this story. I left as a bear, I joined the light painters united that became something different. A tribe lost through space, we called ourselves the Cosmic Mafia and our Don was called Don Sisko of the Cosmic Mafia.